for all of those to pop up. Hello, hello. Happy Saturday. Are y'all ready for some table popping? I'm gonna mute, hopefully I'm not interrupting them. Uh, when gets hit, he's hello. like a <laughs> Hello, friends. Hello. 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 Alright, everybody's got their little faces and shit going on up top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that squirrel. Me, squirrel. <laughs> My dad, I, I exist. I like that when you talk, you whistle, because, like, mm -hmm. that's funny. Also, for the record, just for everybody, anybody paying attention to RP and, like, stuff, you are not still glowing. Like, voice stopped glowing. Yeah. After well, a little while. I mean, he glows when he talks, so. He <laughs> glows when he talks, yeah. And that's fine. No, I just, the, the got worked perfectly fine. I also assume that Midnight doesn't have a shadow wolf come up every single time he talks. Like some kind of weird ventriloquist act. He might. <laughs> you don't know his life. I, I don't. Cool. Alright, so today we are playing the game Legends Rise, which is the fourth game in the season two of the HTML. The setup is Officer Voice here ever since the destruction of his sub that he built. Everybody needs to know he built that thing, including mm -hmm. the engine. Um, After the complete destruction of the sub, got a signal in the sky that match didn't match, but was close enough to his engine signal that he went into a spiral of researching that and nobody else wanted to help him. There was a vote and nobody decided to help you. It was terribly sad. Sorry, I sequestered myself way to focus on my research. And you did. And you succeeded at it. And the, you know that there is a rift above Parliament City. And the real problem is going to be the fact that the only way for that rift to be open is to be have that giant storm that's been traveling the world there at the exact same time. So, oh you're going to have to pilot the ship into the eye of the storm to get, well, not even the eye of the storm, the edge of the eye of the storm, to get through the rift. And that is where the game is going to start. Oh, we should probably introduce our players. Um, We have Officer Voice Vandalbert. Vandalbert? Vandalbert. No? Vandalbert. Vandalbelt. No. Vanderbilt. Yeah. Uh, Vanderbilt, <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's so rough to listen to! No, 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 no. I got there. I'm tired, and I have a headache. <laughs> but we got there. Alright. And that's Cole. He just said it, so that's fine. And then Man. Ray's playing Zachna. And then he's gonna tell me how I pronounced that one wrong. You actually pronounced it correctly. Alright. Um. No, I don't. Fuck it. Kawari? I've never said his name right. Is that... No, it does. That's fine. Do I, I not? Got... I thought it was Kawari. I thought we had finally gotten there. Are you telling me I'm pronouncing it wrong still? Uh, actually, you're, you're pronouncing it right. Okay. Where? Thank God. Right. I'm working for that one. <laughs> He's playing Midnight. And not Forgiven's playing some... We haven't met them yet. Just just forget the far left. Ignore that. But that's, that's not Forgiven. But ignore it. Alright. Special work. Yeah, just a just a just invited him for fun. For funs. Jesus Cole. Um if Cole gets the um that good card. There's a frag house. Jess. So anyway. So Cole has hired the ship two of the ship's scouts to scout out this engine. That's why you two are part of this particular party. That's understandable. The rest of the crew, you are on the airship. The captain has given the green light for this mission. It's not that... Don't think that voice is stolen the airship. So you're all... If you want to be on board for this... What might amount to a suicide mission... To go through this rift... You can be. Man, the... 
I'm glad I replayed Mass Effect 2 to get in the mood for a game like this. Oh, we're going to go through this. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, so the storms have begun, like the clouds have begun forming, but the rain hasn't gotten there yet. Like this is Parliament City at night. You do know there's a lot of people in this city that don't particularly like you. And also, oh yeah, they're on the airship. Um, you also know that the people that don't like you in this city are heavily armed. So, how would you like to get through? Yeah, they're gonna blow up the airship. So, how would you guys like to like make it through? Um, any of you can be piloting it. Granted, Professor Winter is the... If Professor Winter says he's definitely on the airship, so you do have a pilot, and you don't have to worry about you making the roll. Like, Nika will make that roll. So... So you guys, like, you're seeing, like, the ridiculous st storm start, the same storm that hit the, um, Silver Thimble City a couple... Okay, so for the next hour, if you roll a 20, it's a 1, and a 1 is a 20. So, just so you know that one. <laughs> but do any of you have any ideas on how just to get through, or would you like just your pilot to take care of it? Um, so, we're in the airship. That doesn't mean, like, Parliament City is on the, the ground, though, right? Parliament City is on the ground. They do have very tall towers, though. So, like, this is the rift. Um, you can try to fly above the storm for sure, if that's your plan. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to, like, interrupt you. No, 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 it's fine. So what kind of weapons are we dealing with? Um, as far as Parliament City, they are generally... They have... Like, Tommy guns. They do have rocket launchers that we learned about last season. Like, they have basically the same level of guns that you guys have, except for instead of being science-based, they are very just kill-you-based. Oh, yes, the kill-you-based guns. <laughs> Most powerful spells. In... <clears throat> I think mm -hmm. staying above the city and probably riding that fine edge between the lower of the storm and in the storm would probably be best. Alright, um, for sure. Go oh, go ahead. I think I have, uh, a backup idea if we do get spotted. I'm... I want to hold on to it... it... it for, for now, if, as long as we don't... Because it'll be a waste if we don't get shot at, but... Yeah, okay. Um, I... when you roll a 20-sider, then I'm gonna say this is Professor Winter driving the ship. Unless any of you had abilities or anything you wanted to put forth to make it easier. But if not, it's just going to be a raw 20-sider from Professor Winter. Well, Nico, in. I don't got anything that'll help with flying an airship. Alright. Huh. Hoof. Huh. Well, that's uh, unfortunate. Right. Um, that's what not... was your plan for if you got seen there at midnight? Um, my plan is... Give me one second. Where is that card? What the hell? They've spotted us. <laughs> oh, those... Wily Owls. Uh, I think that's going to be your package. Oh, okay, go grab my, it. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I'm here. I'm here. Right. My plan is that card I just played with Midnight creates a layer of sh shadow along the side of the of the ship to basically act as a force field. 
the wizard spell force field. Okay. Oh, and Leo made it. All right. So with your force field, like with your spell, and then like Leo boosting it up, um, you guys are gonna like reestablish like the ship, and I'm just gonna like cut through it and let you guys get right into the rift. It would, um, it was not clean. Like this was like super bumpy. Nobody's hurt from it, but it's clear that this ship is going, uh, this storm is going to be a problem for the ship. And if it's the, your way back in, you pro it's going to be a problem. Right, so <coughs> there we are. You might notice we all know that it I might be a one-way trip. You might notice that I put little wings and jet engines on the airship. Because Beautiful. they stole engines. And steel we borrowed indefinitely. Mm. <laughs> Is there any plan to ever give them back? We were all dead. Huh. Might be sooner than later. <laughs> Not if I could. I'm hoping it'll be later. Okay, so ahead of you. And again, you see the just complete emptiness of space. When you guys were going to the moon the last time, there were these dead twigs like coming from the moon planet and some sticks coming from and some roots coming from like the liminal plane. Hmm. Inside this, when you look outside the walls of this giant hallway that are shimmering and just like Every once in a while, you see something through there, like another world, like another... A bunch of people living their lives, and then it just fades away. But beyond that, you see just giant moths floating through the sky. Just basically a flock of them. Not a flock, um, a murmuring. You know what that is? When a bunch of sparrows, like, get together, and they keep making these weird, like, abstract shapes. Just... Like, that's like what... a school of fish but in the air yeah like a school of fish but in the air yeah. but like moths like moths flying like synchronized and it's very strange um they all do all, I'm just gonna point that out they all look like what if Vatna was a giant moth and not a moth person But that is not where your destination lead um, is. Your destination is still straight ahead of you. And the closer that you get in this rift, and this is a very long trip. I'm just going to let everybody know. This trip is taking longer than any of you have ever spent in one of these hallways. Like, it's oh starting to feel really strange. You're starting to see familiar faces when you look out into the the hallway walls, including everybody on the ship. Everybody in chat, you're experiencing this too. And it's a bit unsettling, in the clo but the closer you get to the coordinates that Voice found, like, the more Voice's skin is beginning to glow blue again. And just, not all the time, but sometimes out of the corner of your eye, you'll see wisp, like, of blue coming off of him. Or when he breathes out, you'll see, like, cold air, except for it's just glowing blue. Look, if you go blow up, warn us first. I think it'll be fine. This is, uh... I want to say it's similar to, uh... When Leto was made, right? Yeah, very similar to that. Hmm. So... I, I don't know, maybe it'll birth another Leto. That'd be weird, but... <clears throat> so... Right. Um, nothing happened in there. I had all these plans if anybody played Ambush or anything, but it's, don't worry about it. Don't play them if you don't think you're good. <laughs> so, you do come out of a... When you go through the final rift and into Neon and Blue, you do come out here. Ooh. And the, the airship rises up out from between this giant canyon. 
and it's full of clouds, like... So you rise up and out of these clouds and see this huge city. Like it takes up two sides of it, and like it is the size of Parliament, or like even the size of the Silver Thimble, just separated onto layers. And it's just like there's all of these kites around you, and some of them are getting stuck in the airship's engines, and some of them are getting stuck in the airship's sails. And the first, like, there is a figure standing at the edge of the cliff, just like, w waiting for you all of the, like, just looks like they've been waiting for you forever. And just staring directly at you. And that is Chatterfang. Hey. Has just been patiently waiting for this ship to arrive. Yeah. There are other squirrels out. Oh, uh, other people out. But Chatterfang is played by Not Forgiven. And he is a uh, couple things from just seeing him. Looks like he's wearing um you guys' uniform or some version of it. Oh dear. So, I assume you guys, like, there is a spot to dock your boat. It's basically where you dock, um, you see giant, what look like elaborate carts, but they don't have any wheels. They just glide across on these giant kites, and some of them are more like hot air balloons. And it's just these just buses full of people that are also squirrels, and they are gawking at your ship incredibly hard. I gawk back at them. They gawk harder. <laughs> I gawk too, gawk stronger. Oh, shit. <laughs> they gawk back with a vengeance. <laughs> so, um, you guys can land your airship here. <laughs> It basically dock it. Uh, um, it's going to be floating there. But. Yeah. Floating should be fine. Nice. Put all of you here. You're on this. And this. Ooh. You're on this. I don't know why Zach is so much smaller than everybody else. That's really funny to me. <laughs> Zach never got beef you up. So, like, that's where you are. And there's a huge crowd of other squirrel people all behind um, Chatterfang. And that is where we are right now. There is... A large group of people. There is a squirrel looking at you like they've been waiting for you for years. Uh, suppose we shouldn't keep them waiting longer. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Indeed. I have to say, if you see any ac anything big and acorn shaped, don't trust it. Uh, well, I will step up to Chatterfang and attempt to read them. I don't know if they speak the same language, but... Yeah, oddly, all, you can actually hear the crowd murmuring, and, like, they are just speaking the language that you guys speak. So, uh, Royce, uh, uh, walks over and Chatterfang. Chatterfang's just got this look of awe, mixture of excitement. Uh, you can see a, a slight glow blue in his, uh, in his eyes. Uh, is just kind of uh, uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, I have been, oh, I've been waiting for this day for so, so long. Uh, I, I, I have foresaw your coming. Uh, the, 
the legends of the the Wanderpuss. Ah, it is so such a good feeling to finally, finally meet all of you. And he'll kind of bow out, and um, uh, as he uh, welcomes you to the to the town. Hmm. hmm. Expecting such a nice welcome, but uh, <sighs> I'm confused. Why? Why? It, uh, just to clarify the picture, is it is everyone wearing kind of something uniformish? It to some some degree or another. It. Imagine if, imagine if ceremonial clothes became like fashionable. That's mm. kind of what's happening here. Like the buttons are very much the same kind of buttons that you're wearing. And a lot of people do wear dark overcoats and slacks, but they do, and some of them are just wearing straight up robes that look like your, that look like your outfits. But, yeah. Then one way or another, they are all wearing clothes that are reminiscent of your uniform. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just kind of confused. Why is... Why does everyone have the same style outfits as us? That's a little... surprising to walk into. Chris will, like, clear his throat and be like, uh, you don't need to bow or anything, uh, where are we? How did you know we'd be here? And who are you? Oh, oh, yes, I, uh, I guess I haven't introduced myself. I uh, am known as uh, Soki Chatterfang. Um, I have lived here. I have um, certain magical inclinations that allow me to uh, glimpse visions of uh, the future, and I. I have seen your coming in one of these visions. Um, I will say that we are on. Um, as I figure out where to win. Alan, what's our town called? The Arboreal. Like Arbor Real, but Arboreal. Yep, you are on the and like um. A old wizened squirrel is going to come up behind you, and you will have known this squirrel as, like, Long um, long Whisker Chin. That is his name. Okay. Mm. And he comes up, and he is, to you, Chatterfang, like, he is the high priest of the people that, you, the same people as you. He's one of, like, and he comes up, he's like, you spoke truthful, Chatterfang. I couldn't believe it myself. Oh, they're here. But are they here to save us or doom us further, I wonder? Like, looking at, like, he was looking over the ship skeptically, like, like he was expecting a different ship. Are, are you in some kind of trouble? This is a little much for us to take in, but I do have to ask. Whiskerchin looks over. And you said they'd be here to save us. He is yes, unaware they... of our plight. Y yes, I, I know I uh, uh, said that, but uh, I also um, I thought they would be coming from uh, the sky, and um, it seems as though not all parts of my visions have yet to uh, fully manifest. Mm. He sets, sets the chin, I, um, he sets his cane down and like, like the whole Yoda pose, like both hands on top of it. And he looks directly at Cole. He's just like, not Cole, Cole, Cole. He looks directly at Royce. He's like, you are Officer Royce, correct? I, that is who I am. He um, pulls like a necklace out of his, a pendant out of his like robes, and it is literally just your wrench, with some sparkles around it. And he's like, "Ah, uh, you built this ship. It says so in our book. But 
How do we know you're not just some kind of thief? Thief. You could be here for it. For our holy relics. But just wearing our clothes in this what is this? And he like like there's a little scribe next to him and like rolls out a scroll and it, he just shows you literally a like a drawn uh, like a portrait of the Wanderper sub. Like this doesn't match this. Hmm. This is part of the reason I'm here. We were told you traveled the seas, not the skies. What else? I don't. I feel like you're not at all who the book says you were. I don't know much about any books, but I know who I am. I'm Officer Royce Vanderbilt of the Wonderful's crew. And while you can choose to not to believe that at all, I know it is a fact. Uh, can you roll me a 20-sider for it? Sure can. It sounded convincing to me, but... Long Whisker Chen is kind of a dick. Nope, that was very convincing for him. Yeah, like, ah, authority. Last as I told you all, I told you all, he would, he would sound authoritative. I knew from the first day you were right. And he, like, class, like, um, class on to fucking, um, Chatterfang's shoulder. It's just like, I'm so proud of you, my boy. With you. No, no, I don't want to get ahead of myself. First, solve the problem, and then we feast. What does everyone eat? We know. Don't worry, we already know. <sighs> Silly me. And he's just like, get it? And he, like, mo like, motions to all the other squirrels, and they start scattering, like, preparing. I look back at everybody else, I'm just like, I got this look of plain confusion in I'm not the only one seeing this, right? I well, as well, I I do see it, but I actually kind of reminds me of home a little bit. This see up, see up for my home was a little weird at times too. So this is about uh, for the course for me. Just not usually on the receiving end like this. Shatterfang, you are aware that the, um, your problem is coming from in deep inside the canyon that nobody has gone to explore. That is. There is a radiating blue light. Yeah, let me move us back over here. From deep inside this canyon. But this canyon, like, I cannot be more clear. These are clouds. Like, this whole, this is just the cloud river. And mm -hmm. that canyon goes all the way to the ground. So it'd be like, it's a sheer cliff from the top of Mount Rushmore to the ground. Nice. But somewhere in there is a radiating blue light that seems awfully familiar. And that, I think Chatterbang is just like waiting for you guys to solve the problem. <laughs> well, uh, so Chatterfang will basically tell you all that, um, give you kind of the synopsis, which is uh, deep within the uh, Cloud River, there is a mysterious uh, blue glowing light that started up. Um, it seems to be angering the clouds themselves, and uh, we do not have the the means to approach it safely. And uh, in my vision, you are here to um, uh, guide us down there, and I am here to guide you towards the uh, the the source of the problem. Hmm. I mean, yeah.
There are theories that there is an ancient shrine in the clouds. But only theories. But it Just has to double check. Oh, go ahead. We rose out of the clouds, right? You did rise out of the clouds. I just kind of want to do a quick check to see if how, like, if that cloud's visible at all, how close it is from where we rose out of. Um, you it's probably morning time right now, but you can roll, roll the... to try to see if you can see the glow. Okay. Uh, Chatter thing, I won't make any promises, but this seems to be where we want to be. One's a 20. Okay. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> That's not yeah. chaotic, if I vote. Oh, no, that would have been bad, but except for... Yeah, it's a, it's a 20. Um, so yeah, with a 20, you can actually see it down there, like, through the clouds. It looks like there's, like... I'll give it to you, there's the, definitely some lightning discharging off of it. Every once in a while, you'll see a bolt, like, climb all the way up these clouds and then hit a kite and just, like, incinerate the kite. Mm. Huh. That's... That's gonna be a tough thing to approach. Indeed. Like, the... Well, I, think I don't know, we'll Royce, this is more your area, right? I... I mean, the energies seem familiar to me. I don't know if they'll affect me too bad, but I do have magical abilities to protect myself. The only thing I can say for sure is we probably don't want to bring the ship too close to that. Unless we need to use the ship to pull it out. Yeah, uh, are, you, are you able to make out any shapes of what's down there, or is it just a light? He rolled it. It was a 20, so it appeared like there was a large... There was a large stone that may have been emitting the light, but the the definitely when they saw the flash of lightning, it was almost like there's an island down there. It's a 20. Here, I'll just give it to you. Like, I have to respect 20s. Hmm. No. Hmm. Okay. That makes more sense for getting to it. <clears throat> I'm not sure we'll be able to get to it without using the ship which in that case we all have to be prepared for worst case I mean yeah I mean all up to you guys hey stop it my cat's annoying but yeah um on like I'm gonna cut to the people on the ship real quick so crew on the ship I don't know how many exactly there are of you in the chat right now um the squirrels have been like one by one like leaving their job decorating and have been coming up to the ship while the away team is like looking over the edge and like studying it like holding up their babies and saying kiss my baby or like give me a blessing or offering you like fruit Offering you different fruits, different meats, like some weird looking stones that you've never seen before. Like some people like holding a notepad up to have you like sign this book. And it's just like, and at first they were just coming one by one, but when they started noticing more people doing it, they're just like flocking to your ship now. Everybody's just like holding up, like like I said, their babies, their food, like trying to give you gifts. 
They're all speaking in a uh, language that you understand, but like, by the way. So that's what's happening at the ship right now. Um. But Chatter, uh, Chatter Fang, you would know that there are ways to get down, and there are kites that they could use to like get down if they were if they knew how to use them. Or you could just like take a. I mean, they do have really long, really strong ropes. That's what I was about to ask. Was if I had a way down there that we could uh, yeah. get down there. Okay. They, you guys do once in a while go down there, but they've stopped going down there due to the lightning and strange blue light. Okay. But so I'll you have, just, yeah, yeah. I'll just relay that information onto the uh, onto the party and say uh, we we do have ways down there. If uh, you do not wish to risk the ship, uh, we do have you know kites, which is our primary fo form of travel here, and we do have good strong sturdy rope if we need to get down there mm. I'm not exactly one great bit climbing <laughs> just tie him off and throw him off the edge <laughs> I mean I think regardless of what we do there's going to be some danger involved in this just I'm a little reluctant you do that kite method, but basically our options are it looks like are that or I risk the ship. Yep. You got rope, kite, or ship. Or you could just jump. I don't know. Uh, Maybe you go high enough that the jump is fine. I, I could try something. Sure. The group that's coming with me. Everybody, get together here. All right. Okay. Matter of fact, we'll join the group. Yep. <laughs> Just a little message. Joins Chatterfang joins the party. All right. Border doo doo. Let's see here. Ability scroll. Um, while that's happening, Leo, what you hear is just like, it's the rabbit. Yeah, he's an engineer. He's the rabbit one. Oh my god. And it's like, I have his etching. And it's just like, like, everybody's like, what? You have his etching? It's like, yeah, hold on. And so somebody runs back, like one of the squirrels runs into a very close house and then immediately comes out and like hands like Leo this basically plate glass window. Not like stained glass window. And she's just like, can you etch your signature? Can you etch your signature in this? And this is what Leo sees. Very specifically, the center top part of that. Yeah, there we go. The part that's on the screen. Hmm. Yeah, Royce is going to snap his fingers and teleport us. Yeah, you snap your fingers and teleport you. Um, I know it doesn't say that you need to do it, but I am going to need a roll. Well, I have to roll as part of the spell. Okay, then excellent. Yeah. Hit me with that teleport oh, roll. No. And there, there, there are chances for gruesome, gruesome thing. Um, uh, that's a, that's a failure. Uh, one second, well, one second, one second. A five on the uh, teleport spell. The party arrives safely, but nobody else does. You don't know where they went. You lose an item you were carrying. Okay. If, like, was anybody going to change that roll? Uh, I just played a re-roll. Okay. Roll it again for me, Royce. You can't play with my feelings like this. <laughs> don't worry, this time it'll be a 1, which in this case is a 20. Ten, middle of the road. Ten, we all arrive, and I choose one. 
Take seven damage from turbulence, or a magic item I'm carrying is destroyed. Oh, what would you like to do? Uh, I I will take the damage. Like I could uh, bump you up one here real quick. Oh, as soon as I find the card. All right, so here's how it like it goes down. Like, voice is just like everybody gather up, and then you all suddenly start glowing blue, and then appear on this wonderful rock here that is so deep in the clouds and as like as you're going through you're just seeing lightning bolts repeatedly striking Royce as the um I what what are oh, you wanted to raise it to an 11 I don't think an 11 is meaningfully different is it uh, you all raise Oh, okay, then. All right, then. Well, then. You see a bunch of, like, lightning bounce off of Royce as you come through, so he's actually fine. But it okay. really, really looked like he took seven damage for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really convincing lightning. Yeah, it was just, like, it was so fuck. It was, like, the Tesla coil things that you get, that you see mm. with all the lightnings, like, striking at them but not actually hitting them. So you all have arrived at the top of this, like, um, strange floating island with lightning just coursing everywhere. Voice, you are glowing very blue at this point. Mm. Like, you're, um, you're glowing nonstop. The same, and, um, Chatterfang, you are too. Your eyes aren't, like, stopping glowing. They're always glowing when you're here. And I just uh, kind I of look be and I just kind of look between them think and, and before he says, hey look, we have we have detect this. Uh, just follow the glow. I so, guess. Uh, oh, <laughs> I glow blue randomly, I feel. <laughs> just some random blue glowing, you know. <laughs> I Poor would player. like to uh, spend three AP to give each one of them a shield. Okay, yeah. So yeah, is, you, is there a certain way I need to spend that, or do I just keep track of it myself? You just keep track of it. Um, okay. we'll um we have like some amazing mods that keep track of that too. So uh, you'll see Chatterfang walk over to you, basically place a hand on each of you say I've born to protect the crew um, please accept my uh, my my blessing hmm. give you each a shield I'm not gonna I reject it and since I just realized I have not done this yet name is Midnight Erebus pleasure to meet you uh, do I know all of them by name, Alan? You wouldn't know Midnight hilariously, but you do know okay. Zacknet and you do know Voice. Like, Voice is definitely one of the most mentioned in the book. Okay. Who's this book? Um, so... You arrive here. And, like, I... They don't see you. I know that the map shows them like right in front of you, but you guys can be wherever you want. There are two squirrels down here already. Hmm. Um, and like they look like guards. They are standing zealous. They have guns, which you might have noticed above and in and Chatterfang's case is not using guns. They, um, if you want more information, you can eat a roll. In the goddamn. Do we see the statues? You do see the statues. Alright, that, that's a little freaky to see. Uh, the, for the people in chat, if you can't see the statue, it is literally a statue of Royce. And a statue of June. 
June Glow, the former science officer. You have to admit the statues are a little weird. Yeah, none of you saw the fact that um, you saw uh, that Leo was handed a portrait, a stained glass portrait of himself to sign. None of you saw it, but that happened. Um, Chatterfang, if you don't mind me asking, how do you all know of us? As I recall, we haven't traveled here through a rift at all. So how would you have knowledge of us? Well, um, as the as the legend states, and Alan, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but uh, one day, um, a book fell from the sky detailing you and your crew and um, we have uh, basically worshipped the book for however long and um, we have foreseen your coming and that is how we know all about the Wanderpuss and crew yeah, and uh, that that's exactly right. A little, the only a little bit more is the fact that you based a lot of your technology off of the book. Like you guys make like amazing homes, and like you don't, you didn't know how to create the same energy that their ship had, so you just used wind for everything. But inside all of those houses is a ridiculously sophisticated like technology. You guys could make guns, but you've never had need of the weapon. Because you live so high in the mountains, who's going to invade you? But, yeah, you guys have radio technology. You have lights at night. It's just like, and it's all, it's all Wander Crew technology. Got all that from a book? A book and some some other things came at the same time. You would know that. But this was hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago this happened for you. Just just the legends of what, what's been passed down. Yes. I hope there's only good things in that book. It, uh, um, Chatterfang, can you give me a 20-sider? I need to, to know how deeply your character themselves have studied and read between the lines of this book. I believe that's how I wrote. Yep. Hmm. 15? Yep. 15 is like, yeah, that'll, that'll tell you what you need to know. There is definitely parts of it that mention the Officer Korzapai is how you've managed to, like, read it. Everybody pronounces it Korzapai. <laughs> and so the pissed. author, the author of the book clearly had something against Korzapai. Like, Korzapai is basically the Loki of your religion. Where it's just like, there's still a god and there's still to be worshipped, but Korzapai definitely has caused many problems for the other gods including like voice always having to fix the ship and it, like everybody always blaming everything on course the author who is only known as b and then very little t um the author of this book had clearly something against course of pie So just, he'll just kind of spew that information at you, but he'll say it like really rapidly. Like he's been studying this for his whole life. And he, ever since he got the visions, he's been curing stuff and getting ready for it and uh, get, just telling you everything that you wanted to know and everything that you didn't want to know. Uh, do, 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 do I know as an officer that, that B plus was uh, like writing a book about everything? You know, B plus was always taking notes on it. Like that was like B positive was just always, like she was the that was her job. Yeah. 
Like, did she lose her book in the recent explosion and all that? She lost her book when Tope came and confiscated a bunch of things. They confiscated everything from the ship. Hmm. Like, she would have a new book now. If You're they right. had her current book, it would have mentioned Midnight. Uh, oh, are there any dates in the book? Ah, uh, fuck me if I would know how it is to answer that question. If you if you would have to find the book, cause um, Chatterfang wouldn't know how to wouldn't know what your date system was. Right. Okay. It might just be like numbering the pages for all they know. Well, after we're done here, I'd like to take a look at the book, but uh, I think we need to head in to where this glow is obviously causing all this disturbance. Terrence is just throwing everything on the floor. Good, good. I hated those board games anyway, Terrence. Relatable. Thanks. Um, I'm gonna go real back, real quick, back to the crew who are being flooded with squirrels. And squirrels. So, Leo, have you decided to chisel out your signature for this wonderful squirrel woman? Oh, excellent. She is very happy with you, and you just see. Up, good. Thank God. I hate everything. I guess, Terrence. Um, you see a bunch of other young, like female squirrels, all like jumping up and down about the etching, and talking about how like Leo has a fan club. Uh, many of them are looking for, and you see them holding up sketches. They're looking for some very specific officers. Um. So, oh, like, characters. So, if you're in the chat, can you let me know if you're standing on top of the ship to be, like, and if you are, you're going to be seen. Um, so, that's all great. Uh, so, back to the cave. And it is, like I said, Two guards, you do not recognize these squirrels, like um Chatterfang. And we were told just not to come down here, right? You guys were told not to, like, by all means, like, you are only allowed down here because you prophesized the people who could save you were going to come. And they are here. It's like, they're like, alright, fine, it's like, carte blanche, you know, you can do whatever you want. But yeah, you guys are not supposed to be down here. It was too dangerous. Okay. Danger means nothing to us. You should know this by now. Is art art um how would you how would be write about the crew's adventures? Do, would B write them as like this was a whole, like this was very hard but we did like power of friendship we got through it kind of bullshit or would you literally write it down as it happened but at the same time trashing like blaming everything on cause of But as we wait, um, I was just wondering if um, Chatterfang would think that you guys were like brave adventurers or like more cautious. Like, I just was wondering like if he would know that you don't have any problems here. <laughs> we get results. They're not exactly in the best manner. <laughs> I think Chatterfang himself would just have kind of like an idealized version in his oh, head okay. of these guys. So they're like heroes to him, and they're I get to go on a grand adventure with my heroes, and I'm here just having a great time. Well, excellent. So you don't recognize these squirrels. They are wearing a slightly different version of your uniform, or like the standard dress. It is 
very stark, stark black, and the buttons on their outfits are made out of silver. Oh no, they're the Corsica clan. I'm gonna attempt to just walk past them because I just assume that they're okay. Part of the people. <laughs> yeah, fucking <laughs> for sure. Um, so you start walking up, and they they both point like what are very clearly to you assault rifles at you, and they're just hmm. like oh, freeze. No, but but I got a gun, and. I point to the statue of me behind him. That's me. <laughs> but she said if I pointed this at you, y you would stop because it'll hurt you. I mean, maybe. You know what else would hurt you? I, the, the gun? Uh, how about a giant hammer in your face? Because that would hurt, wouldn't it? A he sits back and she's like, You can't threaten me! I'm not scared of you! He says, stepping back. <laughs> Midnight kind of steps forward to uh, to where he's aside and just growls at them. Just to kind of add to the intimidation of it. Alright, uh, one of you two has got to give me a 20 cider. It feels like the intimidation works, but I need to know if they, like, are scared and they shoot. Oh, I, I, I was going to use an ability. Oh, go for it. Like, that's fine, too. Because I'm just going to use all my abilities. Uh, but, like, he growls, and I'll just be like, move aside. And then as I say aside, I, like, fus them. That, uh, give me a 20-sider for that one, though. Yeah. Let's just see how great that goes. Alright, 12's a success. Like, um... So yeah, you the gun goes flying out of their hand and they go... Like, they bash the back of their head off the... off your statue. And the other one just turns and, um... focuses at midnight. But midnight, you've got enough time to do something. You're like right in this uh, fucking, this Tommy gun sight. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, as soon as he, he points the, uh, the gun, uh, gun at midnight, he just thrusts a hand forward and shouts out the word crash as he, as a bunch of shadowy tendrils just fly out at that squirrel. No, I'll bring that ability up real quick. Yeah, just go ahead. And... I, it... <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, 20 side out. Ah. Uh. Okay. So, um... Yeah, okay. Um... They do they completely dodge it. Like this squirrel, this one was trained. Like does a little roll, comes up, like and puts a gun right to um like gets close to the distance between you two while the shadow's like going around them. And now they have you, you right under your ribs is what oh well I made it a ten. Okay, so tough choice. Uh you can either hit them, but they're gonna hit you back. Or they're gonna dodge and open fire. Like you'll take them out, but you will take four damage. Hmm. Two damage, sorry. Just two damage. Yeah, I'll take the hit. Okay. So you get grazed by a bullet, and this one gets hit with full in the face with dark ten tentacles. Tendrils. Hey. I do believe we're shielded right now. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's basically so, why I took the hit. I guess that's the shield. Just have less of a shield now. 
it shield like lasts shield until because... it takes three more damage in a single hit. So mm. we're still good. <laughs> Wait, is it single hit? Yep, single hit. Oh, jeez. All right, so you guys all are presented with this cave, and that glowing light is incredibly bright, and it's like shooting straight out of that cave. All right, what is the crew doing on the ship about these? Uh, as you guys take out the other, or the the, the two guards, you'll hear Chatter Fang just go, "Yes." Oh, that was awesome! <laughs> Fucking yes, dude! <laughs> and like to Chatterfang because like you like the cards happen. You watch what looks like bad luck keep turning into like like no, it's like oh no, they totally fucked up. But then it's just, like history like restitches itself in front of you. The fuck? Yeah, it gets confusing after a while. So, we're going to go up to here. K said that they want to interview some of the squirrels. And I take it that means that you want to get off of the ship? And said, go interview some squirrels. And they're like, oh no, we know just the place. This would be a great place for an interview. And they take you to their church. And... What? Long, Ch Long Chin Whisker is sitting um, behind the pulpit and just like reading off and everybody that decided to go with K um, is just reading off of this book and they are literally just describing season one's characters like just verbatim it's just like officer voice Vanderbilt like engineering officer dwarf blue skin like it's just like greatest hits like dingus ever seen I want to see a frog fuck it's just like just a list of and it's it's clearly written by B plus so like any Any flavor that it has that's not just like exactly what it is is just in the tone of B plus. And if um B plus have a take like taking your blood, it probably tells you how they thought the blood tasted. Which might seem really weird to like the squirrel people reading this. But near the back of the book, it is all schematics that it is, um, oh no, uh, Caustic, would you like to make a roll to learn more about this book? <laughs> if, would you like to try to study this book? No blood types, just flavor profiles. That's terrible. This one tastes a little bit like Jolly Ranchers, but only the orange ones. There are no orange Shelly Ranchers. What did Nick? Oh, it's it's a twenty. It's still a twenty. Yay! That's very funny. The. All right, so here's the answer for like, voice and everybody else. This book is two books, but only with a twenty would you have realized it. This is not. It, this is a copy of a copy of B's notes combined with all of the notes that um, Admiral Tope had made about the ship when they were selling the information to Parliament. So that's why you guys have an airship because she sold out the crew to Parliament and they built a ship based on Royce's technology. 
that book is here. And this culture has been using it as a Bible. Um, you know in the book doesn't mention Tope? Tope's name is not in it. And they have the blueprints for your guns, for their ideas of how your engine works. Although these people have never got that got it working because they, they just went and fell onto um, wind turbines. Uh, with a 20, I'll give it to you. It's because they don't have silver here. There is no silver on this plane. So mm. they couldn't get it working. And you do know, for, uh, everybody on the ship now knows that Korzapai is a snake woman, a snake lady, that everything in that entire book went bad because of. Because that's how B wrote it. And it's basically, they all think that you have a devil figure as well. And your devil figure is Korzapai. But yeah. That's what's going on out th out there. Did you the guys squirrels wanna... literally got this book and like we can make a religion out of that. How they acquired it? Um, it's just sitting on the thing. It's just sitting on the pulpit. Like you can't. They're not gonna let you take it even with a twenty. But they just let you like read it and in awe of like the fact that you know these people. Oh, what was the question on top of that? Hmm. Oh, how did they get the book? It fell out of the sky. Alright, so do you guys want to, like, you can hear chanting happening inside this tunnel, by the way, with the bright light. Hmm. Just, uh, just one quick minor thing. I do want to steal one of the buttons of the squirrel I took out. It's okay. Kind of a nice little trophy taking thing. I have a bad feeling that we're gonna have some company that won't be too friendly when we go in there, so all of us need to watch each other's backs. Indeed. Sounds like a plan. Let's try to be quiet about this. Well, you go in. Like, this is what the room looks like. I had. I was using those squirrels as, like, placeholder squirrels. <laughs> they. Um, these three do not see you yet. Um, you are all greeted by... Well, except for, for Chatterfang. Maybe creepy statues? That's my boulder. Boulder hope. Um, but... Maybe even weirder... Uh, is like all... Like the three walls that you can see. Not, not the wall behind you, that's stone. But the first wall is just painted like stained glass of some of your crewmates and then there's another wall that is the officers and then the wall behind this um behind the source of light is just the captain And like, yeah. And this is a much bigger, like much less like optimized engine. Like it is base. It's clearly somebody trying to build your engine, but it is shooting lightning and these guys are just standing there staring at it like in prayer 
I'm a little offended. <laughs> it's my intellectual property. Are you just gonna say it out loud? Yeah. That's the squirrels like whip <laughs> around. And again, these squirrels are all like packing. The one behind the um thing he like struggles but gets a rocket launcher to his shoulder. Oh god. And like and he's like, who? Like, no. No, 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 no. We had a plan. It was a simple plan. We turn it on, we leave. We become the god. Who are you? Why are you here? What are you doing? We'll, uh, we'll speak up. Uh, Chatterfang's gonna walk forward. He's gonna gesture to the walls and he's gonna say, can't you see? They are the heroes of old, the legends that we have all been told about. Can't you not recognize their faces on the walls? They can't be them. We were already told that the liars would come. I know a liar when I see him. Who's that one? Where is he in the book? Pointing to Midnight. Well, uh, he is he is midnight. Uh, 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 and Chatterfang will just kind of uh, ponder for a second. Just say, I don't know. New, new. He must be new. New? We've we've had this book for hundreds of years, and you believe it's lies still? Hmm. Well, yes, I have prophesized they're they're coming uh, and uh, they came exactly when they uh when I thought that they would he literally is like I really don't have an answer what are you hoping to accomplish with that and I point to the machine the engine back there because it's not doing what you want it to do very simple she told us that we just fill it with the correct rocks and then it'll allow us to explore the universe. And he like re looks really excited. And be our own god. Not follow and then like hand waves at you all. And who exactly is she? You know, she was in your book. Um, and he describes a woman with a mean face named Sura. Uh, you would know her as like she was Topes number two. She was like a secretary, secretary, whatever. Hmm. She, um, she shot Laurel. No, no, she, um, she was the reason that Laurel got shot. Also, Leo's character doesn't like her. I see. Uh... And she I told us. That. Kind of. Um, she told us that you would be here and that you would try to stop us. But joke's on you. We already filled it with the weird rocks. We're just waiting. Did they fill it with silver rocks or is it just filled with like random garbage? Oh, that's gonna be a question you gotta ask yourself. But... If you are in communication with the people up top, which I assume that you might be when they when they got the book. I already said that they don't have silver on this planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I make out for where I am what type of things are inside the engine? Oh, uh, if you want yeah, give me a roll. We'll see. You idiots. You've put just diesel in there. What have you done? <laughs> Uh, tough choice. Okay, um... 
do you just ignore them aiming a gun at, at the guns at you and just open it like open the slot where they filled it or do oh, yeah. you I, I, okay. I don't i'm not even you don't need to speak further no i just ignore them <laughs> okay so um you get there you also are going to take one damage from this rocket launcher guy. Like, what are you doing? And he, like, shoots at you, but the shield reflects three points of that damage. And he goes flying across the room. I know it doesn't reflect it, but he's too close for the, like... Hmm. And, like, you take one damage and just kind of, like, just get back up and keep walking towards it. And the other two squirrels in here are terrified right now because they did not know that you had a shield spell on. And you just ate a rocket launcher to the face. Just and walk up to this like home. Let me let me take a look here. What have you done? What have you done? It's it's just rocks. It's the grayest rocks that they could find, but they're all they're all blackened now. But and it's, it's getting. I don't think it gets hot, but it's getting whatever it it does. put the wrong rocks in here it's like no the one like bouncing off the wall a little bit she's like no we didn't we put exactly what she told us to put in there you find the grayish rocks the wood he uses for gray is like closer because they don't have a word for silver hmm might be something similar but not exact maybe they put those in there like the other two are, uh, like the other two have like their guns drawn at the rest of the party they haven't fired yet but they're they're not happy with you guys there's one thing I want to do real quick yeah sure so, since they fired at Royce, Midnight is a little bit pissed off, so... Basically, he's he's going to take a step forward and just... Uh, just kind of darkly say, You either leave, or I will make you regret the last moments of your life. And he's going to be using Declare to try to convince them to leave. Basically, the whole idea behind it is that he's so loyal to the crew that any harm to them is an insult. Okay, um, the little, like, the two in front, little, like, they're like, okay, all right, wow, 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 wow. And they, like, they just, like, slide through you guys, um, and, like, leave out the thing. Zach, now what are you doing? He's keeping an eye on on the guy who went flying his oh. and his hand man is uh man he's basically got man he's ready and he's got his death hand ready to fire if, if the if anything happen bad happens he's ready okay. to fire all right so we're gonna go back to the church real quick so we know that k is, is like reading their bible and if anybody else left the ship with Cossack's character, like, you guys are being flooded with people, like, just trying to touch your hands. Um, and it's starting to get a little, like, um, and this is the same, this is going for the same for K too. Oh, how the society changed since the, oh, they, uh, it's been so long that there's no recorded history of them without the book. <laughs> Um, like they've always had this book has always been their way of life as far as like anybody has to say outwards at least yeah um but anybody like not on, I'm gonna say everybody on the ship too like the squirrels have like started getting on the ship and they're touching everything they're like some of them are like playing with the wheel. Like they've they've become emboldened by realizing that you guys 
are willing to talk to him. So, like, Leo, you are just surrounded with just, like, your new fan club. Like Akana, the walking up to it's just like, you have the gun. Show us the gun. Show us like, and they they're not like saying gun. They don't have a word for it, but like. Oh, what would you declare, Leo? But um, so yeah, you've got the one guy pinned down. You have the machine glowing very similar to when it was glowing underwater, the um, other one. But this, I, got, I cannot be more clear that this is like the knockoff version of your engine. Like, this is, you got great value Leto Drive here. <laughs> like, they're definitely onto something. And it would be way easier to, like, make this one better than to build a completely new one. Right. I'm just examining it. It's like, he, did they put like titanium ore in here? Like, this is garbage. Could we could retrofit it? Okay. I said, like, what? But don't don't touch it. If you touch it, how are we gonna get to the other worlds? And he stands up to his like full height. Like he, he doesn't. He has his arms up, looking at um. Zach, and like, please, please don't. I just want to be more than living on this weird mountain. Like, worshipping people. Then go. Do things. You don't need a machine. I need a machine to get to wherever you're from. Why do you want to go there? She said she was going back there. You in love with her? I... He looks around, and sees the fact that his like crew isn't around. He's just like, "Well, what if I am?" Royce nods and he just kind of walks over and pats his shoulder and says, like, "Listen, man, you don't need her. All right. I know she seems amazing, and she's just got legs like, for days. Like, like." It's your whole world there, right? And you want to follow it. But I'm telling you, you would you all, your race has done here with just a book. Imagine if you started thinking up your own things. You, you could be crazy. You could you could make up your own own machine that isn't based off of my schematics and everything. And it could work. And, and, you really you, think so? Yeah, I mean, you, you don't need to You think that would impress her? I mean, yeah, it would impress I me. My, he, he stands up to his full height. If I, if I made my own ship, ah, she would love me. Yeah, you know, all that hard work you put into making it, you know? She, she'd be more impressed with that than trying to copy something, you know? You're right. I'll copy this right here, think, and I will make my own ship. Ah. And he's like, yeah. He just stands like full height. He's just like, this will be amazing. And he like reaches and he's like, well, I won't be needing this. He reaches into his pocket and just throws a bunch of glitter into like the furnace section of this. And it starts sparking and just like <laughs> the lightning's going crazy. She's like, ah, and he just hops over the altar and he is li literally going to walk out this door if nobody stops him. Uh, I've um... I'm gonna attempt to fix the machine. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, no, stop. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. All right. Um. So, voice. Do me. Give me a study roll. Uh. Seventeen is perfectly fine. Um. He has thrown entirely too much of everything that shouldn't be in there. The last thing he did was definitely on purpose. Mm. Like, he just wanted to, sc like, scrap it. I don't think he realized how far along this was to, like, giant explosion that causes massive 
hurricanes that fly around the world for multiple weeks on end. Do I think I could stabilize it if we put in the correct material? I bet, like, if you guys put, if you put in like a lot of work to take care of it, you could. Yeah, you believe that you could fix it. What if I like threw in my own blood? Oh, that's macabre. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, like I, I, you know, pull out my pocket knife, just gash myself and just slap it in there, you know? Okay. Yeah. Roll me a 20 sided. Let's see how this goes. I'm not losing another what? engine. A one's a one now though. No, it's not. Really fresh it. Did he refresh it? <laughs> so one's still a 20? <laughs> you guys are all the more crits. <laughs> Fuck. All right. I'm just confused. Oh, no. Warlord played another. Uh, uh, kind of a group of squirrels. Okay. You're well, getting you drunk with the squirrels now. Okay. Um, Leo's, like, helping everybody out. So... Yeah, I'll get back to the squirrel party. I, it's very reminiscent of the of the party you guys threw in Pastora. I'm pretty sure. Oh, not again. Just, just a fucking... <laughs> so yeah, twenty. That works perfectly. So in the mist, in the like, it starts giving off a bunch of mist. And as the mist like goes through the entrance, you start he- like you feel like little earthquakes. And the people nearest the door, you guys can see outside, like crystal, not crystal, um, like just silver, like the richest silver veins just cracking their way out of the ground, like where the mist is hitting the, where the mist is hitting this like rocks that is like electrically charged. Like you just are seeing towers of silver like unrefined but still silver. Oh. Like growing out there. You're still gonna have to collect it, but like you have time to right now. Like the lightning has started to like the lightning isn't shooting off at such an arc the way that it was before. Before it was like going up and hitting kites every once in a while. Now it's very localized to the silver and to the engine that right there. It's dangerous for you guys, but it seems like you've stopped most of the danger. Huh. We need to get that silver. Put it in here. I'm not losing another engine. Even if this is a little shoddy. So... Hmm. Voice, would you... Cole, would you say that voice is a whistle while he kind of guy? Oh, 100%. Like when Terrible you focus. like when you cut your hand, did you happen to like be whistling a thing? Just to kind of maybe like tune out the fact that you were cutting your hand. He, he might have done it subconsciously like, uh, all right, here we go. Shh. And... Yeah, yeah. So that with them with this wonderful engine happening, making its like own melody of the rocks bouncing around in it. Has opened a rift. Because Warlord says we opened a minor rift. Warlord just wants me to disappear for a while. Uh, it's gonna bring something in. Oh dear. (sighs) So what comes to- I don't have a lot of just mindless enemies. I mean, you could bring something from, uh, like, related to Royce. Hmm. You know. What do I got? We don't need another red... Ca- I don't want red caps again. Is there any enemies from Lullaby? The Lullaby enemy was just a giant, um... Robot. 
sorry, everybody wasn't expecting that card. Should have wrote down a plan for that card, but I didn't have one. <laughs> Warlord loves just throwing chaos into the mix, and I, I live for it. <laughs> yep. I like the idea of it just being like something like wild, you know? All right, so take a flesh ball, and it's just horrifying. There we go. Oh god, no, 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 comes just like this giant weird mechanical crab but it does like you can hear it clicking and it's all it is made of porcelain or some kind of ceramic but then the rift immediately closes this rift was made of your blood which is a thing that we probably don't want <laughs> but now crew you are now in a crab battle not the crew up top. You guys are planning a party. How's uh, that pl party planning going? Out of character, that looks like... I could have sworn yep. that thing popped up in Lancer. Oh yeah, totally. I don't have different files. It's all just one thing. Or it could be a giant <laughs> chicken. No. No, hold on. Hold on, this is better. This is so much better. I'm sorry. Forget about the crab. Forget about the crab. This giant puddle just seeps through. And, like, when I say seeps, it looks like it just pours out of Royce's hand. Like, it, I'm, I'm instead of blood at first, like, it, <laughs> it's, it's running blood at first, but then, like, what comes out is it's just, like, gelatinous, like, creature. Tie on. He stinks to high heaven. He is the worst smelling creature. He looks over at all of you and he's like, Mm. Why aren't you at work? And like, he appears to be growing in size as he goes. And um, you're all going to have to make saves. Or just like, roll me a 20-sided to see if you can even stand the smell of him. Oh, good. Okay. Yep, Zach did uh, mine. Wait, was that? Yeah, it's... no, Zach did roll the two. Voice did fine. I do have a request. Yeah, sure. Since I specifically said that Midnight does not like strong smells, could you drop mine a level? Uh, you always want it to be a catastrophe? No, it yours is. No. Okay, okay so you and um, um, you got you need a tough choice. It is either you're going to have to plug your nose. Ooh. Oh, so Zach, Zach is in the middle of the road. So you and here's a tough choice for both of you. You can either flee this room, at which point you won't be able to help Royce and not forgive him for what they, they do next. You're going to have to take a turn outside. Or you are able to stay in here, but... Any roll that's not a success is you're going to start throwing up. Both of your characters will just start getting sick. And mm -hmm. you'll lose your turn. So you can either go outside, catch up some fresh air, or risk any roll making you sick. Yeah, I mean, I will go out and get his breath real quick. Okay. Same with Zach. Nah. Alright, so you two are outside. And the people inside, this giant slime looks at their voice. I don't think you work for me. God, I hope not. And he just like looks at his clipboard. Mm. I suppose. And he looks at the, the engine and he's just like. That's bad news, isn't it? Can you leave? 
And he looks he looks at the door of which he is like like way too big for right now, but you did just see him come out of your hand. So what did He's just like I don't think I will. And he just literally like sits down and like he does the motion even though he doesn't have a bottom half, you definitely see butt cheeks. And like mm. He is slimed all over this, including... You You might notice that there was a book here at one point in time. That book is no longer... You guys are no longer able to get that. It's gone. You've lost the book. That, that's what Warlord did. <sighs> uh, Chattered Fang, you want to help me out with this disgusting... Uh, yes, Officer Royce, sir. <laughs> salute, double salute. <sighs> what are the orders? Hit it. Like, it just, like, looks up. And it's like, turns and looks at Chatterfang. And how tall is Chatterfang? Like, three foot four. Yeah, I was thinking they were all very, very small. And he's just like, Please, little squirrel. Again, can I have your name, please? In position. <laughs> is this... I didn't think we were running interview today. Oh my god. Uh, I need my wrench. I'm, excuse me, sir. Can't, I'm conducting this interview. Clearly had no interest in joining our fine company. Rude, by the way. Mm. Deeply rude. Chatterfang will just say, I'm uh, Soki Chatterfang, and as he kind of reaches into his bag, you'll see him pull out kind of like a sling, and uh, in his other hand, he's got some like uh, acorns that he loads into the sling, and uh, then he'll say, I am um, I don't know what position I am, but I am here as he starts winding up his 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 uh his sling. He like slowly turns his like turns to face you, and his like neck folds like fold over each other, and they just keep armpit parting. As he's like, and he's so gross, and they smell. Like they shouldn't smell, but it's like just as his skin getting pressed out of his own skin, it smells terrible. And like <laughs> he does not seem to like have any real concern about your weapon, but you can go ahead and make that roll. Okay. So I will just uh, kind of let it loose as per what I understand my orders to be. Yeah, that's a success. You definitely hit him for two damage, and he's just like, he goes, he wheels back, and it's like, it's so rude. You can reach your wrench, by the way, Cole. Do you have your wrench? Yeah, I, I okay. use Lawbringer to summon my wrench. Oh, okay, excellent. <laughs> the wrench just comes flying to you. <laughs> uh, oh, so anybody yeah. on the ship, the wrench just suddenly comes flying out of the ship? Uh, I'd like to try and hit him with it. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll on poor Craig. <laughs> Craig wasn't supposed to be here. Okay, here's here's your choice. All right, you're gonna hit him with your hammer. It's gonna do four points of damage. Like one of two things is gonna happen. One, the hammer is gonna get stuck in him, and it's gonna take a while to get it out. Or two, the hammer will never stop smelling like him. 
for the wrench. I'll take a turn to get it out. Okay. <laughs> Smack. So, like, yeah, it's just like he he reels back like again, just like all of his like flaps all like over flapping each other. A Leo made it a success, so like you just crush through the the back of um pale, <laughs> and like he just kind of flattens out completely, and then you see him slide into the cracks in the floor. Oh, and just, just, just slides himself like through the cracks in the wall. It still stinks, but nowhere near as bad. Um, he does leave his tie behind though, if you are interested. A stinky, blood-soaked pink tie. I'll take the tie and bundle it up. <laughs> Just stow it for now. Alright. So, that happened. Um. So, this thing, like, you got about like we had like a 12 turn clock I had started earlier you got about 3 left you know this engine's about 3 turns to go um alright Chetafeng we need to get the others help me get some of this silver that just grew outside okay I heard uh, Cheddarfang. yeah Cheddarfang. Oh, Chatterfang. All right, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I wasn't here and thing. Uh, I'm going to hit the silver with my wrench to break it off to chunks. Right. Uh, Zachna or... Oh, you three. Do you have any ideas of how you get you collect silver? You do have a saber and a trank gun. But theoretically, Over. I could use my needful hilt. Instead of a saber. Would this work? As as Chatterfang is obviously prepared for everything. I've I've played battery and ram. Absolutely. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he'll kinda he'll kinda scrounge through his scrounge through his backpack and he'll take kinda their version of a battery and rag and just say, Alright, I'll go over to the silver and just go. <laughs> And, and try to break the uh, break the silver out of it. I do love the idea of a um, like a collapsible battering ram, and like <laughs> it uncollapsing is what what you're using for power. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Somebody did this um magic item cards. Give me one second and let me pull up my Google Doc. One sixteen. I don't think silver is magnetic. It uh, it'll count. It'll work. It's not, but it is. Like Leo makes specifically silver um ma magnets that collect silver. So Okay. As you're bashing in uh how um what was your plan there, Quarry? Like, what was Night Iron Midnight gonna do? Uh, I was looking through what I what I have available. Um, I think what Midnight will try to do is he's going to. Yeah, I think this is the best thing I have. He's going. He's going to use his shell tendril strike on it, on it once to see if he can break off a large chunk at once. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh. So, and Zach, that you were using needful hilt to like make like a pickaxe. Yeah. Excellent. So, go ahead and give me rolls. I just need like two successes, and it'll only take one. That's one success. Very good. That's a that's a three. That one's that one's okay. gonna go bad. 
I can fix it. Ones are twenties, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Ones are in fact twenties. Uh, make it a one. So you. <laughs> right. All right. So Zach no longer fails, and Zach's roll for like the mining is going to be the highest. So here's what you got. Like somebody, somebody played like magic items. So uh, off the top of this spire, this newly formed silver spire falls an item that is just like it's a diamond shaped gem but like as you like look into it there is clearly a beating heart in the center of it and that is all I'm going to tell you about it until you get but you it's about the size of a baseball And that's for Zachner's the one I grabbed. Because Zachner's roll became the 20. Uh, Royce. I think you might want to take a look at this. Sure, when the engine's not about to explode. Um, oh, you all did gather plenty of silver. So you loaded it with silver. So now you have two turns. It has gone a step down into the correct direction. Now we just have to fix it. Alright, I gotta fix it now. I don't... <laughs> Basically any role, and if you can, like, if any of you have an ability that you think might help, we can definitely just, like, yeah, 100%. We can hand wave it to help it. Hmm. Can't really. Uh, I'm not supposed to be able to inspire PCs, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'll let you inspire PCs. That's fine. I'll inspire. Uh, I'll inspire. Uh, uh, Royce, who looks like he's about to. Uh... Absolutely. Anyway. Yeah. So like you are, you feeling it? You feeling the love of this culture? Like you seeing a statue of yourself? Like there's a mural of yourself. It's crazy. A little weird. Like I'm gonna fix this engine. Based on your technology, they've built an entire civilization. You know. Okay. Right. So kind of humbling. Ahead. Yeah, but I mean, just maybe. Oh shit! It went. It went backwards. You inspired him too hard. <laughs> 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 Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Alright. <laughs> uh, uh, really too inspired. Okay. Uh, so, oh, is okay. anybody gonna change it? Because I did have something written for if this happens. I, I, I can. Reroll that, please. I'd like to not die horribly. Can we re it? <laughs> yeah, it's a re-roll. Damn it. <laughs> Just roll 20 again, it'll be real funny. <laughs> or it might be horrendous. Three's still pretty <laughs> bad. Three's the second, like, we gotta refund that. That 20 sucked because somebody played the reroll for it, and only one. Unless. Unless you wanna make that three a 20, which does make it a failure. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna refund the triumph. All right, so a three. Um, this engine's like this engine's like about to blow together. up. Um, <laughs> so everybody on the um, up. Oh. I think we you get we're gonna refund that one, Leo, because only one card per die roll, and the re-roll was played. So the re-roll was the card, just so we don't get stuck in like. Yep. I mean, I may not have any skills, but I could probably use my needful transfer my needful help into a wrench. Try to help. Oh, for sure. Um. 
Okay, because of that three, here's like here's the ultimate thing. All like give me whatever idea that you possibly have to fix this thing. All for just the four of you. And you can you can make it up, it can be silly, but everybody's gonna have to need a roll, and I need an average of I'm gonna say twelve or higher. Huh. Um And well, that's going to be how we are fixing this right now. Sorry, go ahead. Assuming that we're just spitballing, Royce is going to turn and look at whatever you had offered to him and just grab it and throw it into the fucking engine. I just throw in the silver. Just the heart gem. Oh, you throw in the heart gem in? Oh, you that's what you said, yeah. I'm okay. gonna put the gem in there, like oh. just fist it in there, like ah, this might work. I don't know. Okay, okay, that's one. Um, go ahead and make a roll with that one. Okay, a nine's not the worst. So, whose idea is next? Um, I mean, Zach Noah was handing the uh, gem to uh, Royce. Yeah, but then he made that rule. Were you going to use the needful hill to make a wrench and, like, start tightening things? Yes. Gonna be a treat. Alright, give me your roll, too. I don't. I don't think math is is really working out for us. Two more. Ooh. Leo, I think we might need that that catastrophe. All right. So what? Like. <laughs> or two. <laughs> what is um Chatterfang doing? Uh, I am uh, consulting my um, bag of stuff. I played a key. Was there? Would be there? Uh be a spot for a key on this thing yeah i mean i, I, could, I just I could turn see. it off yeah oh yeah let's let's see if like how that goes i'll give you a bonus to whatever you roll with like you have the like the right screwdriver to open a portion of the door it's one of those weird fucking like <laughs> all right so that one's gonna be a 20 but yeah, you opened like a tiny little door and managed to turn off like its backup power supply. So like, now we just need one more person, which is midnight. So I think Rico turned, went play the middle of the road, and then we had some Terius play the catastrophe. So I think. Oh, okay. I think mine got turned to a ten. So. Here's what I want to do. I go and play a card real quick. Sure. And I'm going to use the rope from this grappling hook to try to secure anything that's rattling, like it's about to, like it's unstable rattling. Because oh, absolutely. I'm not, yeah. I'm not an engineer. I can't think of anything else right now. No, that makes sense. Go ahead and make that roll. Hey! Hey! Oh. In the nick of time, even. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it doesn't explode. You guys do manage to like calm it down and shut it off, and like the lightning starts like going down, and like everybody in the streets having a good time partying with your fellows. Like, with Leo, like, convincing everybody. Um. Oh, sorry. Um, you guys all just, like, having a good time partying. You have no idea what's happening underneath you. Not a clue. Um. But you guys, like, um. I don't know what the play is here. Like, if the engine is off, like, completely off. Um, Chatterfang, you feel personally 
like, um, I don't know if you guys are the kind of people that sleep with fans on all the time and stuff, but like, when you're used to the ambient noise of a fan and then all of a sudden it turns off, oh. and like now you're in like, not total silence, but that weird silence, that's what it feels like when this engine goes off. Well, I feel like something's very wrong. Or like something's missing. Okay. I just okay. had a horrifying thought. What's up? Uh, guys? Out of curiosity, was this also making the island float? That's a very good question to be asking about this island. Not you just had to say I it. You just, you just had to speak about it. Looney Tunes rules, man. <laughs> So Don't we all just start floating up. <laughs> I, so I'm just. It is not falling right now. But the the electric discharge and stuff that has been aiming, hitting those um the giant piles pillars of silver, they are slowing down. We, do, uh, we, we could restart the engine and see what terrible, terrible things could happen. You got a permit to I, fly that island? Here's the question. You said this engine's bigger, right? It's Yeah, it's a lot bigger than the one that you had in the stub. If, if we gave it enough fuel, could it open a rift and travel? Like the island? That sounds like a fun idea, but it did open a rift in your hand a second ago, so I think you could jump to that conclusion. Well, now, now the the speculation here is, do I have to fuel it with myself in order to use the rift making ability, like you know, Leto oh, no. does? You have tons of that. You have tons of actual silver right outside. Um, there is a musical component to it, but you know, you as an officer, you would know that, like, if there's enough silver and the engine's going and somebody's singing basically any song, it'll take you somewhere. Do, do we know the song that takes us back to Liminal? Yeah, you would have heard it. I'm convinced you would have heard it. Um, roll me a 20 cider. Eleven. I mean, eleven's a success, not a critical success. Yes. Like, you know a song that you associate so strongly with the liminal plane that if you whistled it while you did all of these things with this engine you could open a rift to get through Be especially because you were technically in water because those clouds are so wet so yeah but that's oh, gonna take oh. yeah, oh, go look at everybody is like I have this crazy idea but we could ride this rock all the way back home Well, if, the, if it works, it works. Well, will that take just us there, or will it take everyone? Uh, just us, I'd assume, and we might die, but it's better than falling to our deaths. As he That's says that, like, as he says, instead of falling to our deaths, you do start to, like, feel the sudden, like, elevator drop, you know, oh, or, like, like a roller coaster drop, it has begun. You can feel the gravity just start shifting as you begin to fall. Uh... Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it! Alright, all the silver you can throw in this, we're gonna start it, and I need you all to sing with me. <laughs> <laughs> what? What does it sound like? What is. I, I honestly, I think it's a, a she shanty. 
Shanty yeah. Shanty <laughs> is basically, I like to think the Wellerman is like how you get back to the liminal plane. You're not going to get me to sing the Wellerman song here, Alan. Oh, that's a shame. Because <laughs> I heard there was once a ship that was put to sea. The name was the name of the ship was the Bully O.T. The Bully I O.T. Love. I assume we just start singing a sea shanty as we yeah. try oh. and save ourselves. Just everybody roll. I'm going to take the highest this time. No average, just... I will just see, like, that the highest roll is what we consider a success here. Okay. Hey, well, 13's not awful. Four's not good. Six isn't good. Wow. Okay. So on the only one that can hold a tune, especially when falling through the sky on a now silver silver meteor, let's just call it what it is. The Billy OT. <laughs> no, you guys are all just chilling. Um, but the rift does happen. And and now we gotta just. The captain's gonna yell at me. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'm putting numbers on places, but you guys can't see them. I need you all to know that I'm. There are numbers associated with places. I have six places that this will happen. I feel like Royce is going to get the reputation of that shit and saying things happen when he actually does stuff. Who would like to roll a six-sider to decide where we're going to crash into? Can we make Nika do it? <laughs> <laughs> I like that you, like, while you're playing, you want to make Nika responsible for your dis your idea. Yep. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain. Okay, just so everybody knows, just so, like, I don't change it later. Just so, like, you know that I'm not, like, railroading here. One. You roll one on the six-sider. It is the silver thimble. You're hitting your own city. <laughs> Two. It's just out in the ocean near Pastora. It's it's a safe place to be. Three, you hit Parliament. Yes. What are the be fitting? Four is another safe number. So there are two numbers that are safe because the ocean's pretty big. Five, you crash. Um, into Port Barter, not the city, but out into the, what used to be a swamp. Because that city's been through enough art. And then six. And six is a dangerous one. Six I don't... I just Six I'm putting on this list because it seems like it could be a lot of fun. The word tree. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just That would be just like me. Destroy all the fucking words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, Renika, whenever you would like to roll a six sider for voice. Hey. <laughs> oh. oh, that's not good. <laughs> and Royce said, fuck book. We don't need that. <laughs> uh, I wonder if we can modify that in any way. I don't want, I really don't want you to. Well, okay, okay, port barter swamp. Okay. What if I have a razor that one? <laughs> <Rico>. <laughs> what if oh. I raise it by two? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh shit! It's only you can only do one negative. And one card per thing. But you, Cole, are you still like a higher map to your member? Do you have like the the up die one? The Rupert emote? I can't remember. Uh, 
I'm not sure. Because there is... Rupert has an emote where he's holding a toy. these cards that fix things. Ah. <laughs> uh, sure. Do you want... If you want to play the, 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 the Huzzah card and say you fix the word tree, we could do that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, sure, why not? Okay, so here's how this goes down. As the meteor comes plummeting through, it clean cuts the word tree in half. And like, then lands in the, like, splashes into the water. The word tree is huge, though. So like, not, as, not the whole thing in half. You know what? How do you explain it? Like, when you're almost all the way through cutting a tree down, so what's holding it up doesn't look like it physically should be able to hold it up. It's just mm. really weird looking. That's what's going on right now. And as the four of you climb out of some weird shrine to yourself in an engine that you somehow survive. Like, I'm just, like, the lightning and stuff, like, the way that you survived initially... You survived this time. But you are now on the island outside of the word tree. Um, as you can see, the word tree is starting to fall down. Now, I don't need rolls because the card took care of it. No, you it doesn't hurt you at all. Like, you don't feel what's happening. The same as like, I wouldn't feel what happens to my... Um, so, I don't need rolls from you, but just the four of you, tell me how you jump to action to fix. Oh, boy. Um, and the word tree, not forgiven, I don't know if you're 100% familiar with it, are you? Do I have to explain the word tree to you? I'm vaguely familiar with it, so right in line with my character. The word tree is a tree that anything that gets written down a leaf grows on this tree that has the exact same information. Okay. And if somebody destroys the information off of these trees, that information gets forgotten. I can hold up a tree. Uh, anything that you guys do would be a success. So if you think that like your character has like a, even a minutest chance, just treat it like you're rolling a 20 to do this. Or a 1, as today's game has seemingly gone. Right. It's currently not active. <laughs> oh, well, thank God. Huh. need Billiam's set of skills right now. <laughs> yeah, because most of my ideas require AP and I'm out almost. Do we have any rope in the area? I'm probably. There's still some on the, there's some tied around the engine and I bet you could just grab off that grappling hook. Yeah, probably. I also have my feather hook. Theoretically, I could use, combine that with enough rope and create sort of a, a connection between the two parts. Yeah. Okay, like just the as hard as you can, just hold on. Yeah. All right. I will assist with holding on. So it it's just you three like with the rope just holding this and it's about like it's huge it's just, it's it's fucking big but you're all like adventurous like 10 times stronger than normal people i get it what about you chatterfang what's your plan uh you're saying the place that i am 
from has like it's like made of like wood and cloth and stuff, right? Yeah. Would my people have been able to uh, make a high-powered magnet, but for wood? You know, I don't hate it. Wood. Magnet. So, but like, let's just let's just have it not be a magnet, like not like a piece of metal. Okay. Are you but thinking like glue? Like play the. the oh yeah, the high. Yeah, that would yeah. be fine. Yeah. Yeah, and then we just have. Uh, something that works for it that is very specifically designed for my character's world. Oh yeah, I bet like if you throw a couple of your um like seeds that you use to like for your slingshot. Yep. Like that that'd really do it for me. Like I'd be. All right. Yeah, that work. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys. And like, like I said, like we're treating it all like twenties because, um, it was a card played, and so you guys step back, and you look, and the crate, like you watch the um, like the wood glue stuff, like start like appearing more solid and like an ambery color, and you see the little acorns instantly start growing, into just the tree, like they have their own roots, but they press up. So at this point, it looks like there's a forest, like, being held in, like, an amber resin, like, the resin pour things, you know what I'm talking about? Hmm, yeah. And that's happening inside this, and as you look up into the boughs of the tree, it's, you can watch hundreds of branches growing. Like, so many branches just everywhere, and... Some of these branches are so big and so heavy and growing so fast that like, they, they droop down next to you. And just a quick look before the rest of the branch like grows shows you... Like, these are books that look like they're all about squirrel people. Oh, lord. I don't even know how to know the implications of this. But that's where you guys all are. Huh? How does it feel to be the first people to fly a rock? Uh, a lot different than flying a kite, I, I'll tell you that. And a whole lot lot different than flying in wings. It is whatever trick. Whatever happens, uh, but... don't don't tell the captain what happened. <laughs> whatever happens, <laughs> don't tell the captain what happened. I have another concern now that I'm thinking about it. You know those three an annoyances we had to deal well yeah those three annoyances we had to deal with? Do you think they came with us? Oh, they kited off the um the rock. You would like it, they would have been you two's problem to deal with because you went out like because they were gonna come back with a bunch of people, but then Stinky showed up. So, mm. so when you were out there like not throwing up, you watched them just like jump into like geysers of air. Okay. <laughs> now we didn't kill any squirrel people today. Yet. Speaking of which, um. How's the party going on in fucking, like, Squirrel City? Like, actually, it's a full thing. You guys have lost subtlety. Everybody's just fucking partying with them. Oh, Cole's internet's currently dying a bit, so. Oh, dear. It's all right. We got done most of what Cole had to do anyway. So, like, the crew on the ship, you guys all just, like, I don't know if they survived it. Yes. But, um,
So you guys haven't had word from I'm gonna like fast forward this a bit. You guys haven't had word from the team in quite a while at this point. And they don't seem to be able to reach you on your communicator. You ate a couple squirrels? That seems rude. Yeah, it's just like, you guys... So, okay, they have not been drinking. Um... I don't know how you guys plan on getting home, but I don't think that's going to be hard because, like, there are people that live on this island that'll give you... Except for Chatterfang. That's going to be a tricky one. Because they only got through that rift because of a very particular storm that's happening. It's already an owl man. He's a superhero that lives in Parliament City. I love him. We haven't gotten a chance to play with him. Mm. Um. Yeah, um, you guys can roll out, like, we can just fast forward to you guys searching and not finding them. Um, I don't like teleport being used for inter-rift things because there are specific wizard moves for the rift thing that are legend are the legendary ones, which is why like Lurid can technically do it. Um But uh if Professor Winter, yeah, your character is not drunk, so Nika, can you give us a 20-sided to see how the crew on the sub gets home? What's a good, tough choice? Okay, so the tough choice for the crew, and you guys can all make this as you're piloting through. It, I guess it's mostly for Professor Winter because he plays the pilot. If... Ah, oh, well then you're fine. You guys made it. You guys made it in record time. Never mind. You make it through, like, you guys pop out the rift of, above <coughs> Parliament City in time while the storm is still there. You guys don't have any problems with it. Alright. And Lurid ordered you not to tell the captain about this. I'd like to... Not Lurid. Cole, Officer Royce, ordered you not to tell the captain about this. Do... Any of you, th you three report what happened here? Well, the nice loyalty is more to the captain than anyone else, so... Yeah, he's gonna... He, he is the one that's gonna spill the beans. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna tell him. Oh, I mean, if you get, like, as you guys would have plenty of time to tell, I was just wondering if wasn't gonna like it's like everybody like yeah okay <laughs> leo tried to keep on contact voice asking if everything was all right so i guess your communicators did work um you guys got back way faster than them like they didn't leave for quite a bit longer but the weirdest yeah, you guys arrived way faster flying a rock than they did flying a ship. Even if you take into a, um, 
account of like they left after you. The, the engine, the size matters. Giddy. Right. You heard me. Size matters. But only for engines when you're trying to fly a rock. Mm-hmm. Or no, lumberjack. Horsepower and all that. Wink. I mean, the tree didn't. The tree is fine ish. It's bigger, if that makes everybody happy. It, it's bigger and more less symmetrical. <laughs> and now poor Chatterfangs has no way to get home. Because the rift over Parliament only opened under a very extreme condition. I mean, wouldn't be the first extra person from a different world that we've had to integrate into our ranks for the time being. Mm -hmm. uh, do you so, just tell Chatterfang that he's stuck here? Because he probably doesn't have a whole lot of uh, ideas about what's going on right now. I don't, I don't know if Royce would uh, think to mention it. It's kind of like, just don't mention it. Just like, nah, come on, we live here. This we live this way. It's like, all right, we got to go back to the silver thimble. And like, I just picture that Shatterfang rolls with it because you know he's with his heroes. Yeah, that's that's basically what it is. It's, <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, I get it. I get to go tour all the. All of the the water push facilities, and you know they're gonna take me on the tour. Oh, this is wonderful! You see, Bobbert's Casino and Spot. The place looks kind of shitty right now because they just had like a massive hurricane. The, some buildings are still boarded up. Bobbert's Casino and Spa is closed right now. Not sure why. Um, <coughs> the Flamingo security are all over the place, though. There's signs banning bears. It's weird. There's. A lot of anti-bear propaganda. Oh my. Um, I will try to radio uh, to get other engineers to come and pick up the engine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so... So that we can... I'm not Fix gonna it. be mean. We don't need to for that. <laughs> you know. And hopefully update the engine so we can base boost our new ship with the huge engine. Oh yeah, we certainly don't need to roll for that because they RP putting a wench on the um airship. Well, they did. So that well, all works guys. out. Yeah, but go through tell, uh, telling Shadowfang that's that's definitely something. Midnight is definitely thinking about being not from Liminal either, and especially since um, there's one thing I kind of want to to roll on if you'll let me. Just the whole how there seemed to be a time differential between the two the two planes, how much. Midnight could glean from that. Is that something I could roll on? Yeah, you can try to roll it. Um, that's gonna be tricky because you're not in like an engineering thing or a science thing, but I can give you some hints. Yeah, seventeen. Um, time passed exactly the same while you were there. Okay. But clearly. Those statues were for hun from hundreds of years ago. Hmm. Okay. But that's just definitely something that the crew, the engineering crew and stuff can pull out that. So this game was to set up the next game, like the next city game. We're probably going to play an inc incredibly hacked version of The Quiet Year. Just like super hacked. And it's going to be like, um, it's going to be building the ship. Like, 
instead of building the city, which we did last year, we are just we're just building the ship back up. So based on g getting this engine, we are a step closer to building the ship because we have the engine. Also, I'm going to go a step further that and say that we have an absolute abundance of silver again. Like, because you brought a fucking mountain that you turned into silver. <laughs> we brought a giant silver mountain. Look, Captain, look what we got. <laughs> Happy birthday. So when we... <laughs> Like, we're going to use all this stuff to redesign the um, ship and build the ship back up by playing a game of The Quiet Year, but super hacked down. Was the diamond with a heart in it destroyed? In the it, it, was, it was so destroyed, and I'm so sorry. That was such a cool item. It, um, it saved us. That's all that it, matters. Yeah, it's, it, really, it, it honestly did. Because I didn't make you like roll two more times. <laughs> the forbidden, uh, it would have just, you know, Diablo one, the fucking crystal that the dude shoves in his head. That was what. That's what you found basically, just quest version of it. But instead, you used a diamond full of a demon's heart to power your engine, which is pretty metal. Oh I bet that I bet that uh, I'm gonna say that changes the engine a bit. Yeah. Possessed ship. Oh, I can deal with that. Roy sorry he talks to himself half the time. He's gonna turn it into the beast of legends. <laughs> <laughs> Leto corruption arc. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're not here anymore. This place is well not not destroyed. You guys left that place just fine. It's really funny because you guys just came back and broke your own home. Not really. <laughs> I um that is this game for everybody. Um I was ex was honestly expecting more combat and I tried to put more combat in because I knew I had Midnight and Zack now. You guys just talked your way out of it every time. <laughs> I was also expecting the ship to the ship crew to be like inundated with questions and stuff but instead they had to come back because you guys drove a mountain yeah and cut down a tree it was pretty metal you know considering all the s silver and... it, it was it was <laughs> it was very metal it was precious metal if you will yeah <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was way funnier cause to have something that Nika actually drew. I don't have a, a pilot's license for driving ships. And who you know, does? Mountains. Um, like, you're not even the pilot of the ship you built. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... I I can make them go. I can't. I can't. I can't make them. You know, go. <laughs> so, important things we learned today. There is an entire race of people that worship you guys. Entire planet of people that worship you guys, for some reason that you don't know. Um, all of you, all of you know how to fly kites really well. Like, it's just common knowledge now. Like, and it's always been common knowledge. It's completely been just everybody knows this is a thing. It's just like a huge pastime in Liminal. It's just how it's always been. Kite is just like kiting is the number one hobby. So anything written down is part of the tree, yeah? Yep. Would... would the book from the other plane be part of the tree now? Yeah, you could you could find you could find that book in the tree if you went searching long. Oh, things need answers. <laughs> so.
so yeah, that was this game. Um, we play another game next Sunday, and this game has changed that game a lot. And the last game we had changed that game a lot. I do want to play a couple cards quick, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay, first off. I went in a direction I wasn't expecting at all. Okay, okay. And there's a... Kareth Underclaw has redeemed another monster, monster to the I world. I want to introduce that I'll probably talk to you about after stream, maybe. Unless you want me to talk to it and talk uh, about it now. Um, you could just drop it in the RP chat I and mean, into the thing so we can read it and document it. But, okay. Well, <laughs> uh, if you want to talk about it, that's also fine. It's fine. I was just kind of thinking with the demon engine now that there might be some minor demon spawning from... From the okay. resulting effects. Sure. A little bit of engine demons. Like the gremlins in the old Looney Tune comic. Oh, that's... Uh, oh, cartoons. That's a perfect analogy. The gremlins in the engine. It's an actual automotive, <laughs> like, motor thing. <laughs> uh. Nice. Glad we know that those exist now. When engine demons. Yeah, that'll be fun. For literally nobody. <laughs> it's just non style like cause like you guys like your characters don't know. You they don't know. They're gonna use this engine. Why it flew a mountain. Of course it's the gonna power the sub. It'll be good enough for sure. It flew did you guys see when it flew the mountain? <laughs> I mean yeah, it almost chopped down that big big ass tree. I get that. But Right. Caustic is just throwing coins everywhere. Yeah. I know Cox has got a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna update the shop thing shortly. I, Baba was supposed to open a shop too, but I feel like after the bears really fucked up his casino, his, his store is on pause for now. <coughs> uh, but um. Yeah, that's the game. I don't know if Nika has anything she wanted. Okay. Yep, not especially. Oh. I'm still I'm waiting for all of the cards that Kasuka's playing to like finish running through. Hmm. Oh, so Nico, thank you for grabbing five card packs. I'm glad the engine didn't explode. I didn't want to blow up another engine. Ideally. You realize, Alan, but if it was gonna explode, I, was, I don't think Royce would have left the engine. That would have like, been wild. It's like, I'm not leaving another child, basically. <laughs> a fucking Billiam becomes an official member of the crew. <laughs> I, and, um... <laughs> so... We have Chatterfang, member of the crew, kind of always wanted to, didn't expect this is how it was going to happen, and now it's uh, it, it feels forced to everybody else, but I don't think Chatterfang knows that it's being forced upon them. Yeah, uh, I, I am not, uh, or Chatterfang will not be um, dismayed at all that he, oh no, I can't return home, looks like I'm just... Stuck here with all of you. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, the fact the number of ones that were was alarming. <laughs> it, it was just luck that 
Still just 11. No more than 11. We have not done a leveling up yet. But it'll come. But 11 feels like a good amount right now. People don't even use their abilities. But there we go. Speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> I used several abilities on You that. did. I used yeah, a few of mine. This, this group did. There's a lot of people that just don't use your abilities. Um. Gonna say something. You didn't get to keep the book. And the one book got sat on by Craig. Well, you guys don't get that information. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for playing, and thanks everybody for being in the chat. <coughs> I will see everyone tomorrow for some portrait giveaway stuff. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. Alright, yeah, see you guys tomorrow. That's it. Bye. See you around. Bye, Bye forever. Have a good night. I'm really out of it. <laughs>